Hey guys, welcome back to the Drone Camps RC channel. I'm Justin Davis, your host today. And today we're hanging out with a new toy sent to us from banggood.com. I wanna say thank you again to Banggood for sending us this. So we're gonna do an unboxing, review, and flight test. This is the Pioneer UFO, otherwise known as the Mini Q, as, as affectionately called on the forums and around Facebook. Um, sitting it next to the unique Q500, this is the larger brother. Just wanted to show you a size comparison of the difference in size. So if you see this on the website, don't think that this is a full size 500 style drone. This is a smaller trainer drone. It is sub $100, which is awesome. I mean, it might even be around the $50 point uh, right now, but it comes with everything you need to fly FPV. It comes with a 5.8 gigahertz video transmission system. It does shoot video and stills, which is pretty cool. And the new feature it has on it is actually altitude hold. So it will maintain an altitude with the push of a button. Pretty cool. So let's go ahead and do the unboxing now for you, show you what's included with the JD-509 Pioneer UFO. Okay guys, this is the box you'll get in the mail from Banggood uh, when you buy the Pioneer UFO. Let's go ahead and open it up now and see what comes inside. Flip it over. Okay, set that to the side. This one is running on 5.8 video transmission and 2.4 gigahertz, I believe, on the transmitter. I'm trying to look on the box and see if it says 2.4. It doesn't say 2.4 on the box anywhere, but I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, let's go ahead and pull out the accessories pack. We'll pull out the drone and set it to the side. There it is. The Mini Q. Comes with prop guards, not installed. You'll have to install those yourself. Four prop guards. It's cool they labeled them on here. You can't see it, uh, but it does say A and B right here on the bottom of each of these. They should mount right above the motor. Let's see, look on the bottom. How that mounts. I probably won't put those on because it'll fly a little better in my opinion without the prop guards on. Uh, if you're going to be flying where there's dogs or animals or anything like that, uh, children, or you don't want to hit yourself, go ahead and put the prop guards on. It's totally up to you. This is the 5.8 gigahertz video monitor. Flips open and opens up there. There's an antenna slot on the very top so it does include a stick style antenna. Looks like a pretty nice monitor, and that's gonna mount right to the bottom of the transmitter. Next up in the box, we have the instructions. I was happy to see that the Pioneer does include a Chinese schematic, also an English version. A um, Couple other drones I've got before from China mail order uh, do not have English instructions. So this is really nice that a lot of this is in English. You can go through this step by step on how to work this drone and, and most importantly what the, the modes are because um, without proper English instruction on the modes we kind of left to YouTube to figure that out. So on the very bottom of the box is the transmitter. It does have a notice on the very front of it and it's talking about level correction methods. Um, they say that if this doesn't take off vertical and does a lot of wandering and doesn't hold a good hover when you take off the first time, that it needs to be calibrated. So the way you calibrate it is you take both sticks and you bring them down to the center and it will start flashing. Once it stops flashing, it should be calibrated. There's also a feature on here for an automatic shut off if you have an emergency kill switch. So the way you do that is you take both sticks and pull them both out to the outside corner, outside bottom corner. So that will disengage the motors and it'll fall to the ground. This is a 2.4 gigahertz, like I said, uh, radio. You can see right on the front here 
And nice thing about this radio, it does look like it has all the buttons labeled on here, which is a little different than what we've seen in the past with some of these drones. Pretty cool now that you can see on here, uh, return key, you have light key, start and stop, the motors, uh, you have headless mode on here, which is really nice. You have a photo button and a video button. So very cool, we can start and stop the video and all that stuff uh, from the transmitter. And this looks like it will mount right on top of the antenna. I'm gonna go ahead and take a moment to mount that up. Before I do that, I'm gonna show you the accessories pack. And we're gonna find out how many double A's this thing takes because it does not include a, a LiPo battery in the transmitter. It would be nice, but it would raise the cost of the price on the drone. So it takes four double A's, pretty simple. Grab yourself four double A's and go out and fly. You can replace this screw on the back. It does have a snap here, and sometimes I'll just leave this screw somewhere to the side um, because I like to be able to have a quick access to this transmitter. And it does snap and hold shut pretty nicely. So let's go ahead and check out the uh, accessories pack, see what kind of cool stuff they put in here for us. You do get a screwdriver, which is nice. We're starting to collect a lot of screwdrivers. All these little drones we're getting. Extra props, these are important because we do hit things at times, trees, cars, fences, things that break our stuff. And this is the antenna that goes with your monitor. So cool that this thing has an FPV monitor with it for the price. This is super cool. This is really compact. And the nicest thing about this is I did weigh this earlier. It is under the 250 gram mark. So there's no need to register this one with the FAA. Uh, this is considered a toy. It is not an aircraft. So this is the way that the antenna screws on the very top here. Screw that on nice and tight, but don't over tighten it. Uh, and there you go, there's your, your antenna. You can see there sticking up. Now we also get another screwdriver in here. This is probably to install the prop guards. Um, this larger one is most likely for the transmitter, the, getting into the back of the transmitter. The screws on the bottom of the drone, if you're gonna take the frame apart, look like the smaller screwdriver um, screws. And the gimbal's all plugged in. There's also an on-off switch on the very bottom here. So if you put your battery in and you plug your battery in uh, and you don't see it come on, just know that there's an on-off switch. Okay, this is the mini SD card inside this little black piece of plastic. This is your USB card reader. Pretty awesome, all in one. So you can pop this in your computer and take your videos and photos off here. Really nice that they include that. And it includes a four gigabyte mini SD card. Very, very nice. So we can fill this up with video. I need to check the instructions and see what the video resolution is on here. Very important for us to know. And this looks like another USB style charger for the battery. If you open all this up and you don't see the battery anywhere, the battery's inside the drone. So look in the very back of the drone, there's a trap door. And this door will open up. You can take a fingernail and just pop it open. There's gonna be two red wires in here. Thank God this is a JST. This is a JST connector, which is on all of my smaller batteries. Um, it's kind of crammed up in there, so I'm gonna fish the wire out. Okay, and I'll tell you what size battery it is. This is a 3.7 volt. This is a single cell, 600 milliamp. Uh, probably should give us, I don't know, maybe around 10 minutes flight time, we'll see. So it does go back in there nice and snug. Do not pull on the other wire that's inside the back of this because that goes to the flight controller. You can pull the battery out, but don't pull on the other wire in the process. Be very careful. Next thing we have is the, this looks like another type of uh, charger here, another USB charger. Pretty nice. And this is the back side of the clamp for your FPV monitor. It's gonna go right on here like this. So you can see there's a slot there and this will, once you loosen it up, 
it will come forward. Actually, you can just push that forward with your hand. Put the screws through here. This is our hardware kit in here for the monitor. Comes in a little tiny Ziploc bag with four screws in here. So it looks like they might give you two extras. So we'll go ahead and take a minute and we'll put together the transmitter and the FPV monitor. Okay guys, so I got the monitor installed on top of the transmitter and I flipped back that little piece and screwed the backside to it uh, with the two screws that came in the hardware pack that fit that. I did use the larger screwdriver and the F FPV monitor just simply slides on top of the transmitter antenna and comes to the base of it and kind of holds its position pretty snug so it shouldn't move too much but the nice thing is that this is removable when you want to transport it. Um, this thing folds down pretty small if you were to do like an airline uh, check on carry on luggage this will be pretty quick to break down and put in a bag so pretty cool um, next thing I wanted to to show you was this other cable that we have here is for charging the the monitor so there's a battery included inside the FPV monitor you're gonna need to plug that in on the side and plug it into the side of your computer or a USB port We'll go outside and do a test flight and give you our opinion on the flight. Okay guys, I have the camera down at bench level now so you can see the LEDs on the bottom of the drone when we power it up. I did plug in the battery after I got it fully charged. I charged up the monitor long enough so that I think it will probably work. Uh, one of the things you want to make sure you do is on your antenna, make sure that you screw the antenna on before you turn on the monitor. Uh, very important because that could burn out the, the video. Uh, receiver inside this monitor so make sure that you you go ahead and screw in your antenna okay so we're gonna turn on the drone we'll show you the lights hopefully we get a transmission right here in the studio for the video it's waiting for the transmitter signal so now I turn on the transmitter and you should see everything go solid and we have sort of a navy blue in the front and white lights in the back. And it's blinking right now because I believe it's calibrating. I just moved it so hopefully it doesn't mess that up. But we're not gonna fly right here on the bench. I just wanted to show you how cool the LEDs look on the bottom of the drone. So pretty cool for night flying. You can definitely see the orientation when you're flying it. Let's go ahead and flip on the FPV monitor. And it looks like we do have video. So pretty cool right out of the box. I didn't have to do anything and it looks like that there's very little delay from the transmission from the copter to the video monitor. Pretty cool. So let's go ahead now. Let's take this one outside and give it a flight test. Okay guys, here we go. We're going to do a flight test of the Mini Q, the Baby Q. Here we go. We're going to turn on the drone first. The on off switch. Let that load up. And I think what I'm going to do first before I fly is I'm actually going to calibrate it like they said to in the manual before I do a flight. That way it does it comes up nice and soft. First time I've ever flown it, so we'll see what happens. Turn on the monitor. So you can see the FPV is on. There's a little bit of glare. Hopefully you can see what's going on here. Looks like there is a little bit of a downward angle on the camera, which is what I want. I don't want it totally straight ahead. It's going to be above ourselves filming. Let's show you guys some of the flight footage too. So I'm going to go ahead and calibrate now. Push the six down and in. And the LED light should flash on the bottom. It's flashing now and when they stop flashing it should be ready to go okay guys I'm gonna show you how to arm the motors real quick you're gonna take the left hand throttle move it all the way up 
and you'll hear a beep. I've already done it, so it's already beeped. And then put it all the way down, and you should be ready to go. Hit the start button, and you're ready for takeoff. So let's go ahead and do a takeoff real quick. Appears to be flying pretty solid. Let's check out the yaw. Nice. Pretty easy flyer, really. I'd like to test out the uh, altitude lock mode. We'll do some of the different speeds, but this is the first speed. And this is full throttle up for the ascent. Not a very fast flyer, but I don't know if you can see it here on the monitor or not. There might be a little bit of a glare. But we'll go ahead and record some video from the camera. We'll start the camera. And now it shows me record on the monitor. Pretty cool. You can see the video on the drone. I wonder how far out of how far we can go before we get out of range. It looks it's probably around a hundred meters for this particular quad. Okay, here I come. I can see myself. Hello. Go back around. LED lights are pretty easy to see. Let's try a faster head speed, a faster turn speed. I'm gonna push the left button. So now it should fly a little quicker. Okay, I got a little more pitch now so I can go a little faster. I got a racer drone underneath me, so you hear anything else flying by, that's the racer drone. Now you don't really wanna to rely totally on the FPV on this aircraft. You wanna kinda of keep this one line of sight Keep it in close. Don't go too far away with this guy. Because if you have a battery go out on you, or the wind picks up, it'll carry this thing away. I'm going to go back down into the slower mode so I can film a little nicer. We'll show you some of this onboard footage when I get it back on the ground and on the computer. I'm gonna take the mini SD card out, put it in my laptop. That's a pretty decent range on it. It really does look like a little baby Q500. It's pretty cool. So I'm gonna to try to ascend, uh, descend a little bit. It really takes a little while to come down. It wants to go up and up and up and up. Very, very smooth flyer though. I like this as a trainer quad. This is pretty cool. Kind of come close to the ground and see how fast I can get going. Nice. So right now we've been flying for a couple minutes. I'm expecting like five to ten minutes out of this battery, I don't know. It'll probably start flashing on the bottom the LEDs and go out probably start to land itself. Gonna pick up the sport mode a little bit and see how our yaw increases. See if we get faster spin. Yeah, it's a pretty good spin on that. Not bad. Fly nose in. Is that a new one? Yep. Just testing this one out for the first time. Yeah, I hear you uh, giving up the, uh, the specs there. Yep. Then a little YouTube review. Oh, I hear you. That's all right. Don't try to take out your friends with your trainer drone. <laughs> or any animals. So, so far this one's flying pretty good, guys. I'm really impressed with the flight modes on it. I want to try the altitude lock real quick before we run out of video time or battery. So it does hover really nice. This is hands off right here as you can see. It's drifting back a little bit. There's a little bit of wind today but not much. So we're going to try that other mode. So it is maintaining altitude. So it looks like 
it's auto landing right now. So we ran out of battery. So you might be able to see it a little bit better now. The sun's gone down just a little bit. Have everything on now. And we're gonna try to fly it again. I have another full battery charge. So we're gonna play around with some of these other modes. Remember to arm it. Up and down. And then start, stop. You're ready to fly. So let's see. Let's take some more video. There's a little bit of lag on the camera. That's to be expected. Go up a little higher. Now there is a flip button on the top right. Push this button. Pretty tight flip. Push it again. You want to push it and test a uh, turn it to a direction, left, forward, back, or right, and it'll flip that direction. So hit the button, press forward, and it'll flip forward for you. Pretty cool. There's also a button here for light. Not totally sure what that does. If someone knows, comment in the video down below. Okay, so I'm going to test out some of the, uh, it's really hard to make this thing come down. I'm doing full down on the throttle and it likes to come down nice and slow. So we're going to play around with the FPV a little bit. I'm going to fly down this trail. And I'm going to go a little quicker here. A little faster speed. Pretty quick for how small it is. Go back down the trail again. Hopefully you don't have a head on. Oh! Wow! And mine is still flying. Somehow. still flying somehow <laughs> this one is still flying I think the gimbal went flying off but this one nope we lost video transmission we had a head-on collision with a one si 160 size racer drone full carbon fiber this thing is totally plastic and still flying that's amazing I have no idea what's broken on it but that was probably a it's gonna make a pretty cool video. Let's go ahead and land this thing and look at it and see what happened to it. It doesn't even want to land. It's gonna kill the motors. So what it crashed with. Let's see what happened. So there's what it hit. What it hit was probably traveling at least, I don't know, 30 miles an hour. 30, 35 miles an hour. Full impact. Now I have no video on the transmitter, but that was pretty awesome video. I'm sure we just have to turn everything back off and turn it back on see if we lost one little cover on the light on the front but that looks like that's about it so I would say the durability factor of this thing is way high <laughs> what do you think Stuart yep I think so so we didn't lose anything except that plastic bit we lost nothing except one plastic bit on the bottom of the hub right here so well, that that's pretty wow. that's pretty amazing actually I have to say that thing took a lot of abuse <laughs> That took a serious beating and didn't didn't even fall out of the air, which is pretty amazing because this is probably five times its weight. Yeah, five times its weight. It's well over 250 grams. What do you think? This is like 380 grams or so? Uh, yeah, maybe. So that's upwards of 300 to 400 grams. This is probably in the neighborhood of 162 grams that I that I got on my digital scale. So pretty cool. Got to say nice review of the mini q so check it out on banggood.com i'm justin davis again signing out
Okay guys, we're back from the field and that was a spectacular crash. Who could ever think that you're going to have a crash during the middle of a review? That was a 180 racer drone, it was a tweaker drone, probably four times the weight of this copter, hit it mid-air, 35 miles an hour or so, this thing spun around, the accelerometer did its job by maintaining altitude and it didn't hit the ground. Uh, we might have hit the ground momentarily, but it went right back up and stabilized. Didn't have a crash at all. We're just missing one front LED on the front left. A uh, little damage to the edge, the outside of the frame, but everything should still work just fine because it didn't damage underneath where the gear connects to the motor. So everything looks good here. The mini SD card, micro SD is still in the side of the camera. So let's go ahead and turn everything on and see if everything still works on the FPV setup. I'll turn on the copter first, turn on the transmitter and the FPV monitor and it looks like we're good to go. So even after that crash, this thing's still hanging on. I, I gotta say that I highly recommend this. So if you can see that, we still have full FPV coming from the drone to the monitor. Pretty tough, not bad. It's so lightweight that it's probably pretty hard to damage. So this is a testament to the Q, the Mini Q, uh, otherwise known as the Pioneer UFO. So check that out on Banggood. I appreciate the, uh, the free toy Banggood. Thanks for sending that to us. We had a ton of fun with this one and can't wait to fly it again. So thanks again for watching. Like I always say, fly it if you've got it. I'm Justin Davis. Please click subscribe.